Well, hello there, watching the press preview. A first look at what is on the front pages. Time then to see what's making the headlines with the deputy comment editor at The Telegraph, Annabel Denham, and the political editor of The Guardian, Pippa Creel, with us from now until just before midnight. Welcome to both of you. So let's check out some of those front pages, shall we? Starting with The Sun, which leads with the allegation made against a BBC presenter, the headline from the father of the young person deeming the BBC liars. The Guardian also focusing on the BBC story, quoting the statement from the lawyer of the young person calling the claims rubbish. And the eye does the same. BBC presenter did nothing wrong, claims the young person at the centre of the sex photo scandal. Well, let's go straight to our guests on this then. Uh, lots more papers coming in for us as well. Um, Pippa, uh, the story's still dominating a number of newspapers, certainly. Um, bring us uh, what your thoughts are, first of all, on The Sun, uh, which is doubling down effectively on their story. Yes, that's right. I mean, this is a story which has dominated headlines, um, not just today, but uh, over the last few days since the sun broke this story, these allegations about a BBC presenter at the weekend. Um, and effectively, what the sun's doing is doubling down. It's a very bold front page. They say that the BBC are liars. They are accusing the BBC of ignoring um, warnings from uh, the young person's family back in May, seven weeks ago. They claimed that they approached the BBC um, and uh, had a conversation with them and that no action was taken and that this presenter remained on air. Um, they said that they had screenshots of contact between the presenter and their and their child, um, who is now 20. Um, and um, the, uh, they have obviously reacted to, um, <clears throat> to events, um, ongoing events. The police Metropolitan Police said today, of course, that it's still considering whether to launch an investigation into these allegations. Um, and it's really up the ante. Uh, this, like I say, it's a very, it's a very bold front page. And um, I imagine that there's probably some nerves in the Sun newsroom tonight, uh, having made the decision um, to, to double down on the original story. Um, and they've spoken again, I think it's the stepfather of the young person who is saying that they uh, stick by their original, original tale and that um, they are acting only to protect their child who uh, allegedly um, was using he was using this money to to fund a drug habit. So you know it, it is a, it's, looks like a bit of a mess really. Um, and different sides in this story are saying um, different things. Obviously it's legally very, very tricky. Um, but inevitably, intrigue follows, and you know the drama of today means that more and more people will be will be paying attention to this story. So I think we can only hope that it's resolved one way or another very soon. Yes, Nana, but over the weekend, you know, we were reminded that this is complex. Certainly, that is proving um, to be the case. Um, you know, weirdly, we have he says, she says, um, you know, within a family, it appears, who knows? Um, and, you know, effectively, the BBC and the, the Sun pitted, it's slightly pitted against each other here now. Yes, that's absolutely right. Quite extraordinary to have the Sun newspaper going up against the public service broadcaster. Um, it's been an absolutely extraordinary day. We began really by with further speculation, particularly on social media, about who the individual in question might be, who the BBC high profile prominent presenter might be. Uh, and we thought that we were rounding off the day with this bombshell letter from uh, the, a lawyer representing the young person at the centre of this story, the lawyer uh, claiming that um, it, it, there's the mistakes have been made, that, that, that this is, um, and I quote, totally wrong. Um, and we thought perhaps that might be the end of it, at least for this Monday. But um, no, the sum have come out very robustly in response um, to these uh, these accusations. Uh, as Pippa says, um, you know, the, the, the family have said that they were coming out to help the vulnerable child, uh, saying that they had made this complaint to 
BBC didn't feel as though um, it was being given uh, due attention. They put these allegations to them for uh, an hour. You know, it, it's just quite an extraordinary story. And I think, as Piff says, you know, unfortunately, there, there is that intrigue with it. For perhaps a, a while, it remained um, within some kind of media bubble, but it's very much broken out of that. Um, a lot of people are laying claim to knowing who the individual in question is. Um, and I suspect these are these wholly unverified um and i think that this is just going to continue i think the pressure and the intensity of that pressure is going to mount and mount and you know who knows where it's going to end and if we take a look at the daily mail pippa um they suggest in a mail snap poll that one in six people know who the scandal hit BBC star is. Millions, they say, can name the BBC star embroiled in this teenage sex photo claims. And the difficulty, of course, is all of those um, innocent BBC presenters who've been swept up in this, I suppose. Yes, yeah, so and we've had a variety of big names um, from the BBC coming out on social media in the last few days, uh, making it clear that the, that it's not them, um, which has just led to yet more speculation as to who the individual might be. And it's interesting to think about why um, the media hasn't hasn't uh, named the individual because there's not a, an injunction in place or anything like that. But there's obviously concerns about both defamation and breaching privacy. Um, and if you're if you think back to 2018, Cliff Richards obviously won a case um, over the BBC's coverage of his home being raided after, after falsely being accused of historic sex offences. And then the Supreme Court last year um, ruled that a person investigated for a crime has a reasonable expectation of privacy. So these are all the calculations that media lawyers are weighing up. Um, and of course, that applies to social media as well. People tweeting speculation open themselves up to risk of, of defamation and libel. Um, so understandably, uh, media organisations are being are being very cautious. And I actually noted there was a, a second story um, in The Sun tonight, which was speculating that some MPs were considering naming the individual in the House of Commons. Obviously, MPs have privilege, which um, effectively protects them from, um, from libel laws. Um, and if, if they if they uh, make an announcement in the chamber of the House of Commons, and it's not this this wouldn't be a first. I don't know whether it's going to happen or not. But if you cast your mind back to 2011, when John Hemming, the Lib Dem MP, um, outed Ryan Giggs um, during a debate on privacy orders uh, after he took out an injunction um, over an affair with the TV reality star. So there is there is some precedent there. Although I suspect, given today's events and given the, the sort of conflicting. Uh, set the accounts that we're hearing from the young person's lawyer on their behalf, um, the one hand, and the young person's parents through the son on the other. You'd think that any MP considering doing this would be would be weighing weighing it up very very carefully before they before they get involved in in, in the whole debate. Yes, and the, the Daily Mail says that BBC chiefs are facing a near revolt from mutinous fellow stars who are said to have put massive pressure on their colleague to identify himself after internet trolls falsely accused others of being the man. That's picked up by the eye as well, um, suggesting that the BBC unnamed star came under pressure from within the corporation to allow himself to be named. But there's pressure too, Annabelle, on the effectively judge-shaped privacy laws we have in this country after that Sir Cliff Richard case that Pippa mentioned. Um, that in the early stages of an investigation, someone has the right to, to privacy, to anonymity, um, which is where we're at now. I think it's, I think it's right that uh, we've been treading immensely careful with this, as you say. Prominent presenters, Gary Lineker, Jeremy Vine, Nikki Campbell, among them, uh, have issued statements distancing themselves uh, from this. Nikki Campbell actually potentially taking it uh, a step further, very affected by what he has seen on social media, on Twitter uh, in particular. Um, and it's, of course, it's, it's extremely sensitive. It's extremely problematic for a public service broadcaster. It's not just uh, the internal comms, so that has clearly been uh, immensely uh, challenging and problematic, not least stars perhaps feeling as though they 
they weren't duly protected by the corporation, but externally as well. It seems as though the reporting has been uh, the BBC reporting on itself, fully aware that it is finding itself at the centre of the story. It is becoming the story, not knowing necessarily what it is reporting on, and really just adding to this complete fog around this story, complete confusion over you know what we know and what we don't know. And it's increasingly looking like we don't know a lot more than we do. Um, yes, and that's picked up actually by this is the Scottish edition of the Metro. Um, Nikki Campbell, um, the Radio 5 Live presenter, who talked today about what a difficult weekend it had been. My pain at false BBC web claims, um, presumably quoting from his radio show earlier today. Um, there's confusion too about the legality of this. Now, we, you know, we don't know. Um, how substantiated any of the allegations are. We've heard from the young person at the centre of the BBC scandal saying the claims are rubbish, which is what The Guardian's picked up on your paper um, by your media editor, Jim Watson, who's written lots about this already this weekend, I know. Um, the young person at the centre of a scandal over a BBC presenter reportedly paying for explicit pictures issued a statement claiming the key allegations were rubbish. Um, the point I was going to make, though, is that legally, um, confusion um, about whether any criminal activity has happened here um, on, the, on the original um, claims. Um, the law on indecent images treats all under-18s as children, Pippa, um, unlike if you had met somebody in person, for example. So there is confusion on the law about this as well. Yeah, and I think this is why the Met has, has not yet um, decided to launch a formal investigation um, because they don't they don't believe that the, the threshold for a criminal investigation um, has been reached. But they issued the statement earlier today in which they in which they said that uh, they would, however, carry out further work, but it would fall short of the, the formal status of criminal investigation, which would give them uh, officers the powers of arrest and search, for example. But detectives are apparently trying to work out what, if any, criminal offence may have been committed by the suspended presenter? As you rightly say, Anna, there is a suggestion that um, uh, any any young person, um, if the young person sent any explicit pictures when they were 17, that that would count um, as images of child sexual abuse, which is obviously a very serious criminal offence. But if the explicit photos were in exchange after the young person turned 18, and it's possible, and bearing in mind they're now 20, that it's possible that no law was broken. Um, and obviously the age at which individuals can share explicit photos is higher at the age in which they can illegally have sex. So the legalities of this are quite complicated and the police are obviously treading very carefully um, while they assess uh, the information that they've already got. Um, the Sun has said that they have seen evidence that supports their the parents' concerns, um, but we don't, I think, know really what that is beyond um, a suggestion that they um, may have seen um, bank statements uh, with transfers of money and possibly screenshots um, or exchange messages between the pair. Um, and I think there was one one reference to uh, the mother um, seeing the presenter uh, on a video call. But beyond that, um, it's very difficult to know how much how much evidence the son has. One imagines that their threshold for publication legally would be pretty high. But we've not seen that ourselves, of course. So it's difficult difficult to say. And as we say, the police haven't launched an investigation yet. So um, they they are still looking at it, but obviously haven't made their minds up. So um, I think from the BBC perspective, though, the one thing just to add is that Tim Davey is going to be addressing staff tomorrow. Um, I think that not, not about this, but he is due to answer questions as he meets journalists to launch the corporation's annual report. And he'll have um, the corporation's interim chair with him there as well, Dame Ellen Claus stevens It's her first public appearance in the role since she took over after the Richard Sharp scandal. He obviously had to stand down. Um, over perceived conflicts of interest rise. So, you know, the BBC has had a pretty turbulent few months itself, particularly amongst senior leadership. And while the Prime Minister and the Culture Secretary say that they have faith in Tim Davey, the, the um, Director General, uh, at the moment, uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether that stands firm. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all.
Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.